Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take a look at a distribution that I've reviewed a spin of by the name of Gecko Linux. But today, we're going to take a look at the actual main distribution that that one's based off of, which is OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE. And it, I'm going to be taking a look at Tumbleweed, which is their uh, stable version. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, I've installed it on my virtual machine. I've given it uh, six uh, cores of my processor and four gigs of RAM. So let's go ahead and pop on over. This is what you're greeted with once you download the ISO and you install it onto your virtual drive or your machine. It should be the same way. You're greeted with this wonderful uh, welcome menu and what what i like about it is it has if you've never used it before it's got you know where where you can you have support side here and then you have the basics here on how to use open i i'm not used open as a whole outside of do a couple of reviews like i said of gecko linux uh, so to me it's kind of new but i if you click on the readme it takes you right here explains the the extra software um, also, as well as the community repositories, uh, you know, if you want to install Google Chrome, which I'm not sure why you would want to do that. I don't like Google Chrome, but some people do. There's this right here is where you can go to to install it right here. Um, some codecs for playing multimedia are not included in the install because of licensing issues because it installs FOSS software only. So you have to. Um, enable the uh, non free repos as well, uh, much like you would in Debian. So there's that. And then there's also community repositories on software, opensuse.org. You may run across community pride repositories while uh, the software is against the latest version of OpenSUSE and should work. So while we're here, we'll take a look at the browser, which is Firefox, and it is going to be version 107. Point zero. So that is uh, the latest and greatest of that one. Uh, and as you can see on the documentation, you know, you got release notes, startup guide, GNOME user guide, reference guide, security guide, system analysis and tuning guide, which is interesting, virtualization guide, auto YAS guide. There's, it, it's a pretty powerful operating system. Uh, YAS, which stands for yet another software tool, is, is a pretty amazing suite of tools uh, that, that, is compiled uh, something to get used to i i've learned that through a couple of other softwares where i've seen it and used it and it's pretty awesome uh to get software this is one avenue there's there's the regular zipper package manager that has a standard tumbleweed repositories in there then there is of course the kde store discover store which is a kde centric applications and then you have this which it takes you to a web page and let's go to games and we'll go to games right and we'll check out uh the different games that they have here and um, so you go to like an arcade game and you've got a megatron extreme tux racer so what you do is you click on it and here you could do app stream install or you could do expert download app stream install is kind of like an app image installer if you go here and you click on expert install then what that does is it takes you to this web page where you could add the repository and install manually grab the binary package or if you click on this standard link just downloads it then you click up here you go to the folder right then you find it as it's highlighted here and you simply double click on it and the yast one click install opens up so you click next of course this is going to tell you if you continue going to make changes and do what you need to do you click yes again then yes to acknowledge and then here you put in your super complicated root password because you're installing stuff so you need to have root privileges sudo privileges 
and now it's downloaded all the binaries and the code and any dependencies that it needed to. And now it's actually installing them. And you're done, just like that. So now, if you click here and you go to games, Extreme Tux Racer right here. So, yeah, I mean, that that is a, another way of installing is right from this welcome menu for software. Uh, it's very awesome. So there's that that method. Now, uh, this is the desktop. Of course, you got your desktop items, desktop icons up in the upper left hand corner, which normally I delete. I'm not big into those things, but, you know, some people like them. Uh, I've seen people with hundreds of desktop desktop icons over there, and I just don't understand why. Now, if you click, I'm sorry, uh, if you click, uh, right click on the desktop, you come up with this drop down menu that gives you configuring wallpaper, configuring display settings, uh, icons, all that good stuff. So I'm just going to go to the wallpapers because, I mean, I like this wallpaper that's there, but hey, let's see what they have elsewise. So they've only got three. They've got the regular one that's in here now. That's a combo wallpaper for a light version slash dark, depending on what time of day. Then also you got the standard open source defaults. And so, yeah, I'll just click with the open source defaults and hit OK and call that good. Uh, down in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, is your application launcher. Then you have your virtual desktops. Then you have your system set settings, your discover software center, which are your pinned, you know, applications here. You have your file manager, which is Dolphin. And of course, Firefox, which we already took a look at. So let's open up the application launcher. And under favorites, you have, uh, apparently they have LibreOffice as the office suite of choice that they've installed here. You have Dolphin, you have Kate, which is a uh, advanced text editor that you could actually edit system files with and uh, save them with root privilege. So um, then you have console as their uh, installed terminal emulator. You have the system settings in Firefox as well. Under application, under all applications, it's literally all of them, a render, all that good stuff. Uh, under development, of course, you've got Kate. Under education, LibreOffice Math, games, it comes with, well, Tux Racer, as you saw, I showed you how to install that from the welcome menu. But it comes with uh, Mahjong, or K Mahjong, K Minds, K Patience, K Reversi, K Sudoku, which are the sweet uh, KDE suite games. Under graphics, of course, you have Gwenview, LibreOffice, Ocular, and Scanlight. Internet, you have... Firefox, you've got KML, Conversation, which is an IRC client, which is very nice. Uh, PIM, KTNF, uh, Civ Editor, and Tiger VNC Viewer for multimedia. It only came, it only came with VLC, uh, OBS, and Caden Live, both of which I installed because it's one of the distros that I'm actually reviewing to move to from Fedora. I'm having some issues with fedora I, i've been i've been saying it the last like five or six videos and i've just literally been dragging my feet because once again it's a matter of changing over my whole production to a different os and you know anybody who's ever done this before knows that that could be a task because you have so much to do not to mention you have to set it up completely the way you like it yada 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 so but i've been looking at this one this distribution as um becoming my my, my new daily driver and so I wanted to make sure that these two programs, which are both channel centric to, to my channel on how to, on, that they work appropriately and do what they're supposed to do out of the box. So, uh, and they do in, in this distribution. Although I will tell you OBS was a little harder to install because to do that, I actually was not able to download it straight from the zipper because it's not in zipper because of the multimedia codecs that it, that it has. And that it uses. So uh, I actually had to download it from the welcome menu software, <laughs> install and install the YPM package, and boom, it worked just fine. So uh, and it and of course you got VLC Media Player, which I said comes out of the box installed on this. Under Office, you've got the full 
Libre Suite plus the contact, the came and all the other stuff. For settings, of course, um, it did not have nitrogen. I installed nitrogen. I believe it uses Fe for its own uh, wallpaper uh, drawing. Uh, a render did not come in here. It uses X render. I installed A render because I like if I, a tiling window manager. And it does have i3 available, which I did install as an alternate desktop environment. And so what I like about A-Render is you could use A-Render to auto-generate a script. And you take that script and place it into your auto-start folder. And bam, it automatically sets your displays to where they need to be right off the bat as soon as you boot up. So that's really nice. And you can find that folder in your .config files in your home directory once you... Uh, turn on hidden files uh, for it's got system settings the Wacom tablet finder your uh, X screensaver settings which is what I use I use X screensaver uh, for my screensaver I love it I love the different screensavers that they have some of them are so awesome some of them are HD quality uh, it's very beautiful and then of course you got your YAST administration settings this is where you can set up your different YAST tools that are involved here if we click on it and open it up you got to give it root permission and see you have all these things right here that it that it helps with that this tool helps with so i mean you got media check online updates software management repositories all that stuff for hardware keyboard networking app armor i mean all kinds of stuff that it that it yes it's a very powerful software tool uh for system um you have arc discovered dolphin which is their file manager which we'll take a look at i installed htop uh, it's got their system monitors as well, the terminal uh, in super user mode. So it's a, it's basically a pseudo terminal. So you can just, that's nice that that's installed right away. So you don't have to actually type in, uh, like if I type in my password, which I think I, yep, nope. See how it's in red? It's highlighted in red. That means that you are in super user mode, pseudo mode. So now you can just type in whatever you want, give it instructions, and it does what it does. You don't have to type in your root password to uh, install anything so so that's a terminal that you could use that is a little on the dangerous side um and there is a reason why they do that uh to give the terminal not the super user mood is because you could actually create problems for yourself so just be leery when you're using or weary when you're using that one of what you're doing uh yes software this is similar to the synaptic package manager i believe interface this is where i guess it's doing an update yep it's just like the app you know the synaptic package manager where you can look in here for uh for uh packages like you can type in obs hit search and of course you get it right here whatever you want so if you know the name of the package that you're looking for you can look for it right here. Okay, so that's the YAST. Once again, a very powerful tool. And so that is it for that. Under utilities, uh, you have your archiving tool, the Compiz Fusion icon. So we can start Compiz by clicking on that. Now Compiz is started. If you go here, you can go to you can select a window decorator you can even select a window manager between comp is a nice window manager i mean it's it's kind of cool and you can quit it so that's kind of nice right there and comp is is a a compositor that does that does a lot of cool things uh you can set it to do wobbly windows do all kinds of stuff so as you as you if you install this and you use that uh, definitely that's something to take a look at you got kate you got kcalc you know just your regular suite of utilities from kde that are installed here uh with the exception of nitrogen so and that's that so as i said earlier with your pinned icons you've got your uh Terminal, you got your Discover Software Center, the Dolphin File Manager, which you open it up, it looks just like that, a standard run-of-the-mill file manager. Uh, you can go to network locations, you can enable Samba, Samba on here, so I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. Uh, next to that um, is, of course, Firefox, which we've already looked at. Then over here, you have your system tray, along with your 
whatchamacallit, uh, hidden notifications like your software updates, you know, disks and devices will be mounted here, that kind of good stuff. Uh, then you have your time and date uh, here, uh, which if you click on it, it, should open up your calendar. And I believe if you click on a day, no, it doesn't do anything. You cannot, it's not interactive where you can, you know, insert an event for that day. Uh, it's your standard KDE stuff. And then, of course, we got your power session over here under your application launcher. So that is um, Tumbleweed. Oh, I wasn't looking for that. That's not what I was looking for. Uh, as you can see, I switched to the the window decorations for um, uh, Ice Window Manager. So let's open up a console real quick. I want to run HTOP. Dang it, I picked the settings again. <laughs> Man, I can't get this right to save my life. So let's run an HTOP in here. Let's see where we're at on this. And let's make this a little bit bigger so that we can read it. Uh, it is showing that I'm using 1.78 gigs of RAM out of the four gigs that I've given it, which is pretty RAM intensive for a desktop environment. And it's not a KDE thing at all because there are other distributions that I've done reviews on where KDE was nowhere near this RAM intensive. So this is not a KDE thing. I think this is a bunch of other stuff that it's got running in the background for whatever reason. Oh, it's got KMS server running. It's got all kinds of stuff running. So, yeah, that's going to be RAM intensive. So, that's uh, kind of not super lightweight, but there you go. There's that. Um, let's close this. Oh, dang it. I didn't mean to do that. And I want to run a NeoFetch, see if NeoFetch is installed. It is. So, NeoFetch, uh, this is running the kernel, the 6.08 kernel for Linux, which is the newest and latest, greatest one. Uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed um, has 2,287 2, packages that are RPM-based. It's got the Bash shell. It's using Plasma 5.26. The window manager's comp is. Uh, the theme is Adwita. Uh, using six cores on my Ryzen. And like I said, I've given it four cores of my thing. So uh, let's... um. Let, let, let's go ahead and, you know, say that, that it's a nice uh, distribution. Ease of use is there. Beautiful. It's not an ugly distribution in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you can install i3 Window Manager. Obviously, you got ICE Window Manager. There's multiple different desktop environments you can download for it. So, I, I mean... Yeah, it's been around for a while, and it's uh, one of the tried and true ones. So uh, I think this review didn't come up any way, shape, or form different than what other what people might have expected for it. Uh, I think that it's a new to Linux user friendly guy, especially with that window, that welcome window that gives you all the documentation that you need on how to use it appropriately. So I could definitely say that new to Linux users can use this with confidence. The installer is the Yast installer though. And it is nice because you can walk through and do a lot of things with it. And the partitioning part of it, it's not as user friendly as say Calamari's, but it's still you more user friendly than like your Arch you know, installer, because it's not an end curses kind. It's a graphical kind. It can be a little confusing. It's on the level of the Anaconda installer that Fedora uses to free the partitioning portion of it. It's on that level. But other than that, a, I clicked through it very easily because I'd never, that's the first time I've actually ever used that installer. And I clicked through it very easily and it went fine. No problems whatsoever. So, yeah, go ahead and download it. Try it if you haven't. And it's definitely one of those uh, reviews and distros that I expected it to be what it was. And it held true to its core. I've seen nothing but good reviews on it. So, and lots of people talking good things in the, in, in the different forums I belong to and groups that I belong to. So, yeah. Hey, guys. Tumbleweed. Beautiful distro. Use it. Do you see or know of anything that I forgot to, to say or put in this video? Please leave a comment down below. Also, y'all keep on doing what y'all do and keep on Linux and y'all have a blessed day.